guys. Hopefully you watched the first video that we did where we uh, harvested our pluots and we cut them all up and got them ready to be processed into jam. So now we're gonna show you how we actually made this delicious jam. Okay, so now um, we're checking in to see if it's foamy, which it's foamy. You can kind of tell if you look at it, it's pulsating and boiling underneath. Um, we're now going to scoop off the foam Kind of let it drip the liquid out the bottom. You know, it sort of looks like a brain or... You can see it's boiling underneath now that I'm getting the foam off. You don't want the foam to cook into your jelly because, as we learned two years ago, when Katie and I were drinking and making jelly by ourselves with no supervision, um, if you let the foam cook into the jelly, your jelly will look like coagulated brains when you're done. So, and it's very unappealing looking. Um, it tastes fine. So if you forget and you leave it in there, it tastes exactly the same, it's not gonna hurt you, but it will look disgusting. All right, so we're gonna, uh, we're gonna put the pectin in now and we're not gonna just dump it all in at once. We're gonna sprinkle it in and stir, okay, to keep it from clumping. If you get a clump of pectin somewhere uh, that doesn't thoroughly mix in, it's uh, most of your jelly is not going to coagulate great, and then you're going to have a weird clump. And notice I'm pulling the jar away from the or the bowl away from the steam while I'm stirring a little. This is to keep the pectin from coagulating on the edge of the bowl. And um, our cook time is about up on this here. We want the pectin to cook in there for a minute or two. That's his subtle way of saying that I didn't ladle the foam out fast enough. Well, you know, <laughs> certain parts of this evolution are a little time sensitive, yeah. not... There we go, there's all our pectin. Just follow the pectin recipe for how much pectin to put in. I'm not even going to say how much I just did because then you'll use the same amount. What about the lemon juice? Did we do that? We did not. Are we going to? Yeah, hand me one of those lemon juices. So, previously measured out by yours truly, 11. <laughs> One teaspoon per two half pint jars. Half a teaspoon per half pint jar basically is the lemon that we used. It does a couple things, adds tartness, uh, but it uh, more importantly increases the acidity level, uh, which is going to be a requirement for shelf life. This is where it starts to get crazy. This is where Michael starts to have a meltdown because things have to happen now. Things are time sensitive. He starts losing his mind and burning his finger. There was cussing earlier. I'm just saying. Talking about my cussing? Yeah. Most of the time you could make a sailor blush with that mouth of yours. Well, I didn't say that I couldn't. That's one of my many, many gifts. However, when I'm not the one cussing, I notice when you're the one cussing, because you usually give me shit for being the one that's fucking cussing like a sailor, but when it's you, I notice it. Besides, cussing is supposed to be a sign of intelligence, so when I cuss way more than you do, which means I'm way smarter than you. Is that what that means? That's what it means. Which is probably true. Hmm. Turn the stove off. Where's the plate? I can't see, so you're gonna have to be my eyes. I'm being your eyes. Stop. Okay, so normally one of us would be holding the other thing steady, but since one of us is holding the camera, mainly moi. So <clears throat> most of your uh, jarring sets will come with your little magnet for the lid, your little funnel that you can put your stuff in so you don't pour it all over your jar. And you want to make sure you fill it. You do not want to fill it all the way up to the top. Uh, that's just a disaster waiting to happen. Uh, if you notice, we're filling it up to towards the bottom of where the threads start. Um, and then, you know, you do a rough estimate your first round, your first go through on that, and then you top them off 
<clears throat> as you kind of finish up right before you put the lids on. And then another step you can do too um, is uh, they recommend also to wipe the top of the jars with uh, like a cloth or paper towel and a little bit of vinegar. Just kind of gets the last little bit of bacteria off that could possibly be just from floating in the air and uh, helps the... Uh, the main reason for that is in case anything, uh, any of your pectin or anything got on the edge of the jar. Right. There shouldn't be any bacteria. Well, no, but that's what they say. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure who they are, but they should stop drinking. I don't well, Tony does tells me that, and he drinks, and he's the one that's all like... Tony drinks a lot. Tony's uh, all about the botulism. He's all about the botch. The botch. Well, the botch. Home canning and cured goods is one of the best places for botulism to grow. Uh, it needs an oxygen free environment. You know what? Somebody tagged me on Facebook the other day about um, these massive outbreaks of salmonella from people cuddling with their chickens. And I had to laugh because, first of all, who's going outside and cuddling with their chicken and then coming inside and eating a sandwich? Wash your hands, people. Wash your hands. Change your shoes. You leave a shoe, a pair of shoes right outside the chicken door. Put your chicken shoes on. Go outside. Walk in the chicken shit. Come back in. Take your chicken shit shoes off. Leave them at the door. Don't track all your salmonella chicken shit through the house. Take Don't. your chicken shit shoes off. Yeah. What are you calling a chicken shit? I'm just saying. And wash your hands after you pet your animals. That goes with any animal, not just chickens. There's also lizards, snakes, whatever. They have salmonella too. Do you they? don't want the lizards salmon and vanilla. Have salmonella? They have salmon vanilla. You don't want it. You die or get really, really sick. I'm just saying. I thought you had more of Have more what? Oh. I didn't know I had that one. I'm too short. Should I be not filming now and putting lids on? Um, Cause I think you're fine. Right. we're gonna take what's left of this. Watch this. We're making little batches that we're gonna use. We're doing our fairly frequent family camp out this weekend, where we binge ourselves on yummy treats and watch movies. This week it's going to be the new live action version of Beauty and the Beast that we got on DVD. Is that what we're watching? Yep, and possibly Moana if anybody manages to stay awake for it. Are which... we watching the Warner Brothers or the vivid version of Beauty and the Beast? Stop it. Um, and then we always make sandwiches or pizza. We make something yummy or get something yummy to eat and have a treat. So this is going to be one of our treats this week when we do our camp out is these little jelly batches that we're making. And I'm going to get some yummy bread and some yummy Oops. cheeses. Where's your vinegar? Right there. He's new. So he's caressing the edges lovingly. Let's also make sure that if you spilled anything, it gets it off so that the lid really adheres and all that good stuff. I think we should make, you know what we should do in every video? There should be a flamingo count. How many flamingos did you see in today's video? Because <laughs> those of you that have paid attention to any of these videos at this point will probably notice that there's flamingos strategically placed everywhere. It's not even strategically, it's random fucking chaos. It's random chaos, but they're everywhere. They're on my body, they're all over my kitchen, they're all over my house. They're everywhere. And then, once people caught on to the fact that I like flamingos, they just bring me more flamingo stuff. Eventually, somebody will bring me a flamingo. Those people suck. Those people are awesome, and I love them. Like, Sarah always gets me flamingo stuff, Katie always gets me flamingo stuff. People see flamingo stuff places like weird sculptures, they take a picture and send it to me. They know I'm obsessed. I love flamingos. Now it's like my chickens, my turkeys. I still, flamingos are still my favorite, but he won't let me get a flamingo. Rat bastard. Of course I won't let you get a flamingo. I want a flamingo. They stink. They're not stinky. They're pretty. He's, notice how he's wearing his wife beater tonight. I wonder if that means I'm going to get beaten later in a good way. Well, you're my wife, so... Well, last time I checked. I'm going to break some furniture later. Oh, wait. It's past my bedtime.
Rain check. <laughs> you don't need to put these on very tight, people. Just, people. Just uh, just spin them on there and just just finger not not even finger like a finger tight nut. If you're working on a car, is way tighter than these need to be. Just saying. If you're a mechanical type, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, well, you probably already screwed something up along the way, so this part doesn't matter. Yeah, you just want to turn it until it stops with a little bit of resistance, and then after they all pop, after you've pulled them out of the hot water bath, like tomorrow after they've sat, you'll go through and tighten them all again and really firm them up, but you don't want to do that yet. And we're not going to tell you why. It's just a secret. I like being a dick. I'll tell you why. I'm just kidding. Because they need to be able to burp. Yeah, I know. I was just teasing. Yeah, that you see those air bubbles coming out? That's a good thing. That's what's sealing it. The air escaping. That's what's going to draw that pop-up lid, you know, when you buy a can of spaghetti or whatever, and you pop the lid and it says, do not buy if lid button pops. That's what they're talking about. Now, granted, they did it on a big corporate scale, and we're doing it on a small scale here but what are you calling who scale are you science calling small? science honey you your scale, scale is perfectly fine you know I like your scale bada bing then you have to wait till it comes to a boil I just crank the heat up I'm gonna cover it for a minute that'll bring it up to a boil I'll, I'll check it in like 30 seconds it'll be boiling and then we're going to set the temperature for uh, so for a water bath canning, uh, the rule is 10 minutes. However, you need to take elevation into consideration. So if you're over a thousand feet, which we're at 1,400 feet here, uh, then you got to add five minutes. If you're over 3,000 feet, I believe you have to add another five minutes. If you're over 3,000 feet, you need to read the directions because um, I don't remember. And if you're at 35,000 feet, consult your pilot and <laughs> fasten your seatbelt. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that. That's, it's already setting. Oh, just on the that's, counter. That's nice. Whoop. Yeah. That's like butter. So uh, I'm going to throw that in the fridge, and we're going to try that in a few minutes. So now we're going to pull this out of the water bath. And you want to be careful when you're pulling them out. Tip, and, tip it just a hair and get that stuff off. And you want to let these sit, they're going to air cool. Um, you do not want to stick them directly in the fridge. <laughs> You'll just have exploding glass in your fridge. And that's fun if you're into that sort of thing. Um, personally, I'm not. <laughs> Why would a glass break if you put it in the fridge? It's some sort of fucking, it's like thermo shit. I don't know. It's like science. That's not my fucking forte, dude. You hear that? Listen. It's like your jam band right here. They start popping once they've sat for a second in the air. That one hasn't popped yet. It will. I'm gonna watch it till it does. You know what they say, a watch jam jar never pops. Anyway, so we let them sit for a little bit here and then we're gonna put them into a pan and we'll move them over. Uh, you missed it, that was your one. <laughs> Then we're gonna move them over to. Doo -doo. I got another one right here. You're feeling poppy. Ha! Ha ha! There you go. So now that they're all innies instead of outies, they're technically done. They are set, they are sealed. Um, what a mess. What a mess. He likes to make messes for me to clean. Then he gets home and it's like magically clean because the cleaning all. So we've done clean. like two batches and we've not even used half. That's 20 jars we did. We've got at least another 20 jars to do. Right. It's going to be a long night. Right. So, and again, note the time. Way past my bedtime at this point. You're going to bed at midnight. Yeah, well, whatever. Well, there you have it. That's how we did it. That's how we made all those pluots off that tree turn into this amazing jam. So good luck making your own jam. Let us know how it turns out. Make sure you leave us a comment. Make sure you like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, click the little bell so you get notifications.